All right, I got an 18 Chrysler minivan just come in. The customer said they were driving back from a vacation uh, somewhere up north or come back to Virginia. And he said they were driving along and the check engine light came on and it developed a misfire. So let's check it out and see what we got. We have an 18 caravan. It's got 75,000 miles on it. You know, I'd be surprised if it's anything other than like a coal pack or something. Let's do a code scan. I'm gonna do a pre-scan. Let's scan everything and see what we got. Cylinder three misfire. Low speed control missing. Door module. Power sliding door mechanical failure. The only one we're gonna be concerned with is the misfire. The other stuff, I'll just show them what he got going on. Say he was up in West Virginia, like say headed back from the north. He was telling me, he said, West Virginia, I don't know how many of you guys are familiar with West Virginia, but there is nothing in West Virginia. You can go miles and miles and not see anything. So let's see, let's go here. Replace spark plug was one of the number one things. Replace ignition coil was the other one. So let's do a scanner. Let's start this engine up. Be some data going here. Long term, short term, speed, spark advance looks good. Look sensor, yeah, all look pretty good. Let's go to engine data. I can feel it misfiring. It's like going in and out. Hey, what? Let's do this. Let's go back out of here. Let's go back. Go back. Go back. Let's go to engine. Spark extent functional test. They move these things around sometimes. Every time you get used to where something is, you need a place to look for a misfire. Let's see. Stop. Unable server stop system. Stop. System test. Which cylinder is misfiring? Let's check it out and see. Uh, number three, it's 14 current. 15, it's got a current misfire on it. 20. So at this point I've confirmed it's definitely got a misfire on number three. What I'm gonna do now is pop the hood and we'll get my scope hooked up and we'll check out the cool packs individually to see how they're all working. Cause I'm sitting here looking and every once in a while I saw one flash up on two and go away. And that could be just coincidental. Yeah, it's not coming up now. So let's go ahead and get that scope on it and let's see what's going on. I'm gonna check out the firing order first. Let's go to uh, the information. It's a Pacifica Touring Plus. So let's look for the firing order. Let's see where number one is. Firing order. So that's the front, looking at it, this is gonna be, uh, looking at it, this is gonna be up against the passenger tire. So one, three, five is in the back and two, four, six on the front. Looking at it this way, like I said, this is the front of the engine. So two, four, six, one, three, five. Sorry, let's go ahead and get this cover off. Well, the good thing about this vehicle is they made everything pretty accessible. I hate when they do that. One, three, fives in the back, and we're, we're lucky on that because you can get to those fairly simple. The front ones here, you'd have to take the intake off in order to change those. And I'm not sure if you can see that or not, but take a look at this. If you look back in there, it looks like there's oil coming out of this solenoid right here, dripping in the number one cylinder. But there's number three right there. That looks kind of clean. I don't see no oil on that nowhere. All right, so let's go to guided component testing. 
Uh, let's look at some component information. This, this component contains a primary winding and a secondary winding. The ignition coil turns battery voltage into high voltage in order to create a spark. Okay. So the DZ voltage test. Uh, back probe the test lead to the connector. Yellow is two, black is ground. Keon should have battery voltage in the relay. I know we have battery voltage because we're getting some spark. Oh, we got the correct amount of battery voltage, I'm not sure, but we know we have something. So let's look at this right here. You know, I wonder, let me just reverse direction here for a second. So I got the scope hooked up. I'm gonna set it to 10, sec 10 milliseconds. This is the tool I'm using. I'm gonna be able to cover all three cool packs at one time and we'll get a reading on here, we'll look at it, and we'll do a comparison, and we'll see how the cool is firing. So first I need to get a better ground hooked up, I think. It's crazy, one thing about these scopes, the tools you get, you literally, on this particular one anyway, you only get like four inches to hook a ground up, makes no sense at all. You can see all three coil packs basically are firing similar, but we only have the miss on a number three cylinder. So let's go ahead, let this thing cool down a minute. Let's pull out that plug and let's take a look at the plug. As a matter of fact, I'll pull two plugs out and do a comparison. You need to take this canister out of the way. It's a little vacuum canister right here. Uh, you could probably get around without doing it. I'm just gonna take it out of the way just to, I don't know, just so we don't mess nothing up, end up breaking something. There's a little red clip you have to pop out. That's your safety clip. And then on the back side of it, there is a, it's a, a gray, kind of like a fuel filter clip that holds it in. You just have to pop that out also. You dog. So my brother was telling me last night that uh, I have a family member and they bought a brand new car and they've been taking it to the dealership to get their oil changes and their maintenance since they've had it new. I don't think he's got 70,000 miles on it, but year wise, it ran out, the warranty ran out and he went and got an oil change the other day, just an oil change, everything was running fine. He said he left the dealership, a check engine light came on and uh, then he said, he brought it back to find out what the check engine light was. Cause like I said, he's always going to the dealer since the car was brand new. And I'm okay with that, you know, you can't fix them all, right? And uh, the dealership, I guess, took it apart and told him he needed an engine, $17,000 to fix his engine. And he's like, he just took it in for oil change and it was running good. I don't know, he called me last night and was asking me about it, you know. I was like, you know, it's one of them ones you gotta go kind of, kind of look at. That's just, it sounds a little bit, far-fetched to me. Flashlight took a poop on me. Uh, you know, I don't know. What do you say, right? $17,000. He doesn't have, he, you know, mind you, he's only got, come on, man. What is up? I think he said like 60 or 70,000 miles on it. That is nothing. Legitly, that is no miles at all. I truly hate these clips. All right, get that out. Pop this off, set it aside. And this canister just kind of pops up. Just tilt it to the side. All right, now let's go ahead and pop out. There's a little clip, another safety clip that's on the cool pack, and that keeps it from popping out while you're driving. I know it's hard to see what I'm doing, but I try to get you a little better view. There's a clip right here. You pop that clip out and push it down, and that tab comes off. There we go. Biggest thing is trying to get them out without breaking them. You know what I'm saying? I mean, legitly, these, everything, you know, it's just plastic. It's, it's very fragile. There's a 10 millimeter. Let's go ahead and pop the cool pack off. Bam. When you get it off, make sure you check the boot. Make sure there's no spark holes in it. This one looks pretty clean. All right, let's go ahead and pop out that plug. So she's definitely junk. Look at all the carbon buildup on it. Not sure if you can see, but look right here. 
So we're going to recommend this set of plugs. And even if you look at it, it don't even look like it's centered. It looks like the outer part is over to the right some. After looking at the scope readings yesterday, I was confident it was going to be a plug. And after I got it pulled out, we confirmed that plug is junk. So I'm going to call the customer up. We're going to recommend a set of plugs, get them on the car, clear the codes, and take it for a test drive. So after talking to the customer, he just told me that this weekend they're getting ready to take a trip. I think he said to Arizona. Um, so we're going to go ahead and do all six spark plugs in this car. Once I get them installed, he wants me to double check the cool packs. And if it's questionable, he wants to replace it. He doesn't want any problems on the road. But like I told him, I said, I don't feel he's going to need it. I, I really feel like he's going to be fine just doing the plugs. I'm going to go ahead and get the back ones done. When I get them done, we'll start on the front. I'll show you how to get this upper intake off to get to those plugs. So we got the back plugs out. This one here, we got to remove the intake here. It's, it's not too bad of a job, but we're going to start by removing the upper breather here. There's no clamps that hold this breather into the intake. This is one that just slides in. There's a back on the back side back here. After you take the bolt out, there's a, it just, it's like a, a grommet, rubber grommet. You just gotta pop it off. And it should pretty much come out after you do that. That's all, it seals it right there. There is a plug right here, a connector you have to take off and it's got a little grommet in here that in the bottom you pull out. This sensor here is your like air intake sensor. You just get your little V tool and pop it out. Get your other V-tool that fits better, you get in and pop it out. On the front side here, there's a few lines, looks like water lines. You're gonna have to get 10 millimeter bolts, take them out. Looks like there's one, two, three, four maybe. Looks like there's just four of them. Pretty easy to get to. I'm gonna try not to unplug too many things. I'm hoping I can just get this off here and maybe get the intake up high enough just to reach in there. It's not too bad of a job. I'm sure this is something you could do at your house. Probably skill level on this here is gonna be somewhere about maybe a three. Not, not too, too bad. You should be able to reuse that plenium gasket. Once we get it off, I'll look at it and make sure.
You always check your sizes. You'd be surprised how sometimes one might be longer than the other and you're not pay, it could be just a quarter of an inch and you're not paying attention to it. So definitely always check your sizes, make sure they're all the same. like they're all up. Let's see what are we hitting on. What are we hitting on? Maybe one more bracket somewhere, possibly maybe. I'm gonna take this vacuum valve off right here. Uh, there's something, there's definitely a bracket down the bottom side I can't see. And I'm gonna take this, like I say, this vacuum valve off. So hopefully I can get in and take a look at it and see what it is. Get a little more access to it, should I say. All right, now I can kind of get a look in here and see what is going on. Something's got me right along in here somewhere. See it's loose. You can use another bracket right here. What is that? So once I got everything out of the way, there's a, this harness right here, there's a bracket right here, and that's what's got it. And what you do is you pull off the, you pull it off the clip, just like that, and it exposes a 10 millimeter. You get your handy dandy electric ratchet, which make life super easy. Go in here and zip it off. But by the looks of this, there might be another one down there. Hopefully this is the last one. See, hopefully it's the last one. Got one right here, it looks like. Come on. I'm exposing one bolt at a time now. This bracket right here is a bitch. It's definitely the last one. All right. It looks like there's one more way down there. Go between these two right here. Come on. Sometimes you just gotta get shit out of the way, right? And he buried this one. Trying not to drop it. Whew. Let's see what's left to get off this thing so I can get it out. There we go. Looking at the gaskets, they, they look they look great. Gotta save them a little bit of money. We don't need to do those. Yeah. Trailer. Oh, jeez. Be one second. These bad boys are on there. So, word to the wise: when you get these out, lay them aside. Take a rag. Just cover up your intake holes. <laughs> One time I did this, I don't know, I was going 100 miles an hour. Damn near almost forgot to take the rags out of the hole. All right, we are good on that. I'd say it's definitely time for a set of plugs. That's a smart thing, go ahead and do the front half also.
They look deformed. It's a champion plug. That's what's in here. All right, we'll get some plugs here and get them on the car. All right, so we're going back with the Denso plug, uh, part number 3483. The gap on these are 43, I believe it is. Easiest way to do it, like I always say, is just gap all your plugs first. Make sure they're all correct. Line them up and then start putting them back in. What I'm gonna do is go ahead and put the front side together, get everything bolted back up here and then treat the back side separately. It was pretty easy coming apart on the back side. Tell you what, the hardest thing about taking time off, like we had Thursday and Friday off, you come back in, you're already behind because you took two days off, and then you have a crap load of people who broke down over the holidays, like this guy here, who's going back out of town, and you try to accommodate. Takes me a week to catch up. My daughter, she uh, wasn't feeling well. They, she tested positive for COVID, and that was before Thanksgiving, so. Then she wanted to be over for Thanksgiving, but she, you know, she said she was her ten days were out or whatever it was. She came over and had Thanksgiving dinner with us. And last night, my wife tells me she's not feeling good now. So, oh my God, I don't have time to get sick. That is for sure. Get a little bit of extension on this. There is a torque spec on this. I'll tell you. I think it's um, looking at the screen here. It's, it's 13 foot pounds. That's not a lot. I mean, if you go hand tight. And just like a sixteenth of a turn, you'll be fine. Just like this. It's tight. It stops. That's your stopping point. And there you go. That's all you're doing. I think I'm on my last bit of dielectric grease here. Make sure you always go back with a little bit of that. It's good. It helps keep moisture out. Yeah, I must put in the wrong hole. That'd suck. If you use an electric ratchet, I mean, if you're not used to using one, use a ratchet. I'm used to using electric ratchet, so I kind of got a, a feel of you know what to do. So I'm not going to show you the rest of this. It's basically a reverse procedure. It's nothing out of the ordinary here, nothing super hard. The next time you see me, I'll have my scanner. We'll be in the car checking for the misfires, make sure everything looks good. I'm going to clear the codes and we'll go for our test drive. Catch you in a bit. Shut the ding donger off. All right. Okay. These newer Chryslers, you have to go through that security link. All right, we're going to clear all the codes because we did the repairs. And if there's any codes, because if I've done something wrong, I want it to be the first one to pop up. We are human. We do do things wrong. Once we get it, once we get the uh, codes out of it, I'm gonna start her up, and we will check it. Check our misfire data anyway. Cleared, 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 cleared all the way down. Hit OK. Let's go into engine. Go ahead and start the car. Let's go to where was that before? I think I went to system tests. Which cylinder is misfiring? Let's go check that out. Now we know we had number three I'll misfiring pretty decently. So right now we're sitting at zeros. Number five pop up one, nothing major. Now we're back at zeros. Let's take this thing for a test drive and we'll keep our eye on it. All right, so far so good. I don't see anything crazy going on. Sitting at zeros on the misfire. He did say, though, it was pretty consistent, especially on Cold Star. He started up when he drove it in that day. Uh, I think it was yesterday. It was misfiring most of the way in. But we're doing pretty good. I don't think we're going to have any issues. One thing to keep in mind, when you switch seasons like spring, summer, fall, usually is when you're going to have things start messing up on your car. Don't ask me why. But when we have a change in seasons, especially around here, I'm in, we're in the east, you know, near Virginia. Every time I get winter hits or summer hits, something starts to go wrong with people's cars. Whether it be a belt, uh, plugs, coolant, you know, when you, that change of seasons, for some reason, just activates something. I don't know what it is or why. And it's good for me. I mean, I make money, but, you know, it kind of sucks for the consumer. All right, guys, that is it for this video. Everything's looking good. I appreciate you watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave a comment. Catch you later.